Hi everyone, it's Victor here again from Trend Following Trading for Beginners Podcast. In today's episode, I would like to talk about basic probabilities and how to deal with randomness in share trading. Uh, right off the bat, basically, um, don't be scared about this when I talk about probabilities, because it doesn't really require much of a mathematical mind to understand it. All we I'm trying to bring you back is back in the old days when you go to school, we talk about probabilities in the math- mathematics classes. I, I personally found it difficult, but for trading, um, it's quite simple. All you need to make sure is and uh, understand it is that each event in trading are mutually exclusive from one another, which means that each event in trading are basically quite standalone. And they don't relate to one another. And uh, yes, it might does not look that way. It seems to sometimes you know have a you know, winning streak or losing streak in trading is very common. But the basic understanding that we must have as a trader is all probability statistics uh, are supposed to be exclusive, are supposed to be standalone, and they're not even uh, related. And each event is supposed to be a random event, and that's how we're supposed to look at it as part of trading. Now, why do I brought this up? Well, I think it's really not talked about it often enough in uh, in trading. You know, look at YouTube; everybody talking about you know systems, uh, method, uh, entry, exit, risk management, mindset. When you search around, how many of them talk to talk about probabilities and how to deal with randomness? Um, for for me, it it sort of helps me once I understand how this you know the basic works. It helps me to to set my expectation better because one one thing I found um, so often people have this preconception of bias is that I'm an average guy with an average or I'm or I'm the best luck in the world. I have everything always work for me, and uh, every time I trade, I can make money. But it doesn't work that way. Or people have some sort of uh, biases to say if we have seven winning next one will be another win in a row or seven losses next one will be another loss in a row but again life throws this unexpected uh, event back to us and say no it, it doesn't you know suddenly you get from a winning street suddenly you get a losing street from a losing street suddenly you get a lo- winning street it's total and uh, it's random and it, yeah being me being a trader, having a hard time trying to understand that, trying to capture that, or try to put it in the mathematical method, I can predict it. But as part of trend following, you don't predict; you just follow the rules. And one thing that helps me to, we over time, realize that each trade uh, on its own, the result of it is very much random. And it might look sometimes that each trade is related one way or another to previous trade or the following trade, but it doesn't. It told it it doesn't. So what what I what I normally suggest to people is, um, uh, which I have done oft, often myself, is that um, basically just do a, a conflict, and you basically just go conflict and say, okay, uh, a head head is a win, a tail is a loss, and basically uh, just use any coin, just flip it and let it drop on the floor, and just make note of you know what is actually facing. Or up to the sky, you know. If it's a hair head facing upwards, you know, you you look down head. If it's tail facing upward, you look down tail. And I do that often, uh, about once some once some month, at least once every two uh, months, basically, just to remind myself of how the randomness actually occurs. So this is uh, I would suggest you guys go and try and do it. Just flip a coin for one hundred times and record the actual head or tails that is shown by the coin. And then look at that your result. Now you, ju- you can use any coin, so long as it's a fair coin. That means you know when you do it over time and do it many time enough, you should get fifty heads. Fifty percent of the time is heads. Fifty percent of the time is a tail, so to speak. So it's a unbiased fair coin. Now, but if you look at the actual result, which I want, I just done one about an hour ago. You actually see a lot of. Winnings and losses. Those winnings and losses, a lot of time it's just ones or twos of winning and losses and stuff like that. So it's quite random. But every so often you see a 
a losing streak or winning streak like four times in a row, three times in a row, five times in a row, and this one I done this like uh, six times in a row. That is like you have six winning streak or six losing streak all coming in one row, and then suddenly get pepper in between these winning losing you know couple of times losing couple of times and so on so it's very random now what what this actually show you if you, if you take it this 100 corn flip as 100 tray and you look at it a more objective point of view is each tray look very random and they are and but you got to understand that because it's random anything could happen so you're currently you're on a losing street next train might be a winning street and then when you're on a losing street next train might be winning a train so it's very difficult for you to try to f guess and double guess what will happen next so if that is the case why are we putting you know when a lot of new traders especially that you have as much time to get lo uh, to lose in a trade or win in a tray, why is new trader to want to put a lot of the money in just one tray or first or one, a couple of trades? So let's say you got thousand pounds, a lot of them, maybe I think you know they just want to make money very quickly. They would then put down, you know, uh, a tray, uh, you know, ten percent. They lose willing to lose ten percent or twenty percent on a tray. But if you do that, you just look at this statistic I just talked about. Uh, to lose two or three times, let's say five times in a row, which can happen, you lose all your money. If you do like, you know, bet twenty percent, and then if you do um, uh, ten percent, and in just ten, ten rows, it could happen. I haven't shown up in my test yet, but you know, if it happened ten times straight in uh, uh, losses, your accounts wipe out. So this is what um, I never get. You know my handle on it properly and a lot of new trader don't they always say why you know when they ask me how much should I risk per trade and I say 1% or no more than 2% the main reason is to keep yourself alive so they can take the next trade because um, so far when I done all these uh, conflicting tests I never seen one yet that I will win or lose 20 times in a row but life being a life when we talk about probabilities here anything can happen so we need to make sure that we keep our powder dry or have money in the reserve in the account to take the next to take the next trade and that is quite important so if you lose if you do uh, let's say the more money that you put or do risk per trade the quicker you you get uh, blow out basically because if it if your account uh, if you suddenly gone into a, a, a street of losses let's say seven and you basically do 20 percent per trade you know very soon you you, know, you end up like a lot of your money already gone you know seven straight in a row and you basically you if you continue like this you'll basically lose your lot of money and blow your account very very quickly that's w the main reason for me I normally I mean when I start um uh first that I never understand this. I always be well put in like say five, ten, sometimes twenty, even thirty percent when I'm really sure and I I blow out many accounts. Many, many accounts. Mm, most of the time less than six months. And that is very um uh sad in a way. And it took me a long time to learn my mistakes and at the end of the day I would just go back to what, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, traders, successful traders say risk le risk one percent or less. So if you got a ten thousand pounds again, which that's what I've been using the last couple of years, uh, I would lo basically risk no more than hundred pounds per trade. So if I lose hundred quid, I get out. Why do I do that? Because statistically, uh, even though um, what you call e could happen but it's very unlikely that I would take 100 losses in a row before I blow my account now if I use 2% that means um, 50 times if I lose 50 times you know which could happen again and I would blow my account so however unlikely if you do if you lose between 1 to 2% 
So you need to like uh, uh, at least like 50 losses in a row and uh, to blow your account out 100 times losses in a row before you blow your account. It helped you to make sure that you still got money to play, to take the next trade, to whatever the signal comes up from the trading system. The, the main problem a lot of time is we so as trader, especially when we first started, so eager, so fixated on winning and winning quickly and forget about the risk, the amount of risk that we put on per trade and then when some long street of event happens that's going against us, we lost some money very quickly and we blow up an account. The other thing uh, that's not often talked about, I think only Dan Pena talk about it, is your emotional trading account, your emotional account, as well as your money account, your emotional account. If you, once you lose, let's say five times, a lot of people are not built for that, or even ten, or even three times. They start to doubt themselves, and they start to doubt about the systems, and the mind, you know, the emotional state, you get, you get really rough. And then basically people lose faith in the system, and they stop trading, or try to risk too much and uh, basically just mess up the, the trade they don't follow the trading plan and causes issues and that is a no-no so the probabilities here I'm talking about risking no more than 1% or 2% it's not just about money but also about emotional wellness the calmness the state that you need to keep balance so that you don't lose your head and then trade too much uh, you know, put too much on the line and trade and take on trade for example that's not you know having good uh, good ratio as well and um, the other thing I want to bring up is also uh, nothing against charting but also in, in, in charts people also need to realize that it should say head and shoulder uh, bear, tra bear, bear flag blue flag uh, reversal uh, crocodile tail or pivotal point all, all those kind of things okay they all talk about probabilities I haven't seen a book yet out there to say you use head and shoulder as your chart uh, for your trigger or breakout what is the percentage that will happen and in what market and what how many win rates are there you know, there's so many books tells you if this pattern happen next could happen but this is a could yeah it's, it's a, it, it might happen but how often does that happen nobody talks about it and because it's nobody actually go deep into doing that now I only heard over time from YouTube channels and stuff uh, I also follow quite a lot of financial news from Hong Kong as well just try to keep track of things only one person actually in Hong Kong have wrote a book about it I still try to find it that would say head and shoulder in forex or share trading have this percentage win rate and loss rate and what condition and um, that's only one I ever heard about no one you know so far in my 10 plus years trading I've never seen a book that you tells me uh, a blue flag a blue flag how often you know you win if that happens you know let's say a breakout how many times it, you know the breakout will work out Rather than stay in the channel, you know th those kind of things. So, so you so in trading overall, this is how how I see it. You need to have a proper appreciation of the randomness of the market, and because probabilities means anything can happen, you need to appreciate that. And therefore, don't bet too much. If you bet too much, basically you can blow up your account. You have a higher risk of blowing your account, and much quicker, and most people nowadays all talks about blowing your account, blowing your account, financial account. Nobody talks about what that, you know, you lost 5,000 pounds. Okay, it's still relatively, you know, not too big a number, but, you know, how does that m mess up your mind? Or well, some people have, you know, put down 20, 30, 50,000 and lost them all over time. You know, how does that do to their mindset? To how they feel about themselves? What about the family? You know, it costs a lot to argue at home too, with your husband and wife, those kind of things. So when, when you're actually playing the, the market, uh, and actually put a trade on, 
try to remember this do this coin flip and just look at it yourself and say look there's a high probability that you know I've done one once of this before I have done a uh, losing streak I captured once that happens 12 times so I, I lost 12 times in a row basically 12 tails in a row heads is winning tails is lost for me and uh, how does that happen I only happen once I get often about you know five or six times maybe eight times kind of thing that actually winning or losing but I can I get 12 and actually I read some books and there's some trader or trading a successful trader themselves they follow trend following and they lost 14 times because the market is very choppy in a range bound because you never know which one yeah signal is say uh, uh, will, will make you money he keep on taking the, the the signal keep on losing 14 times before the 15 time comes along and boom he has a big major training he will lose some loads of money cover all the losses but how many people actually out there can take 14 losses in a row and still continue and still take the signal from the system and still trade. Most people will just fall on roadside and just you know stop trading. So this is how mindset that, that I need to talk about that people don't talk about often that you need to understand. But it's all stuff from the basic. Have a proper appreciation of probabilities that can help you to deal with, you know, anything that could happen to deal with the randomness of the market. Because the market will just do anything. It can just give you, you know, Loads of winning street, or loads of winning or uh, losing street, uh, pepper in between some win, some loss, and you have no idea when when it's gonna happen. Nobody has a crystal ball, so every time when you put a trade on, make sure you don't bet too much, only one, maybe maximum two percent, and appreciate probabilities. Pre- that means also that means appreciate the risk. Anything can happen in the market. So those people say, oh, the flood, you know, only happened once, hundred years. Well, it happens two or three times now in the big, sw- the Black Swan event, you know, year 2000, you know, the dot-com bubble, 2007, 2008, you have, you know, the the subprime problem. Now we have our biggest loan uh, winning streak, what, 12 years now? Start from 2009, now it's 2019, like 10 years. You know, none of the, I think this is the longest running bull market ever in history in America and you know something could, could happen so get ready you know be prepared for things bad could happen especially when in a choppy market when the market try to turn around and find its, find its feet and you get a lot of randomness and if you trade too much and don't appreciate the randomness of the market and how to handle randomness you could lose a lot of money and I hope this uh, podcast today's podcast will help you to appreciate the randomness and how to handle things and hopefully save you a lot of money i hope you like this uh, podcast uh, and uh, if you do please subscribe to my pod- my channel on anchor or your itunes or whatever you're listening at the moment or spotify and uh, if you would like to uh have to chat with me about your trading and what i can do to help you then please uh, sign up for my 15 minutes no obligation zoom call with you at in your in your convenient time and just want to chat and see how i can help you uh, it could be a small little thing or a big thing, so it's up to you really. I can just sort of help you. Okay, so I uh, hope to speak to you soon. Bye.